This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Hey, last Friday I released a game, the Fermi Parallax, which is based on the Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox basically states that uh, if there are, it's mathematically impossible that we are alone in the universe. But even though it's impossible, why did we never met with uh, with each other? Why did we never met with other civilizations? And one of the explanations for this paradox uh, involves a lot of filters, events on the universe that prevent this. But some scientists uh, try to explain this by saying that there is a higher level civilization, in, uh, civilization with a, a high intelligence that is preventing this from happening. It is preventing us from meeting with other civilizations. And in the game, uh, the way that these civilizations are represented is by the player's enemies and especially by the game's boss, which is the Paradox. So in this video we'll see how did I manage to make this boss and this boss battle. Uh, actually we'll just talk about the, the boss pattern, which is uh, the way that the boss behaves, uh, when, do, when does the, the boss will shoot, when will the boss use the super attack, when will the boss just slap, uh, when it will die and stuff like this. And for that, we use the built-in animation tree because it has a built-in state machine, a uh, finite state machine, in which we can manage everything that we need to make this boss pattern. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, I have the, the boss scene open here. And something that you need beforehand is the animations that will define the boss behavior. And something interesting that you must think about is that these animations will kind of represent the, the boss state. You will, won't need to represent and encapsulate these states in the script. You can basically encapsulate all the behaviors through the animations because you can set properties, you can call methods. So you can consider that each animation is a state by itself. And basically, essentially what you're going to be doing is transitioning between each of these states. So, now with that said, you can see that I have a lot of animations here. Uh, deriving the setup, which is the animation that will basically reset everything to its default. Arriving die, idle, and the left hand attack, the left hand laser, the super attack, which is this mouth attack. But uh, with that, with all these resources uh, done, and this will depend on your way to, to design your boss, uh, basically, what we are going to do is to add a, an animation tree. The animation tree uh, requests that we set up an animation player, which by default we are going to use the, the current animation player here. This is what controls uh, everything in this boss, so I will set up this one, animation player. And we also have to, to set up the tree root. This is what will you control which kind of animation tree you're trying to set up. You can set up a blend tree, you can set up a blend space, and but for our purpose, we are going to set up a animation node state machine. This is what we want. Now that we have this blank canvas, we must set up every transition and every state that we want the the, the, the character, in this case the boss, to, to be in. So let's start with the setup. As I say, this will reset everything to its defaults, which is uh, what I want by in, in the beginning of the, the game. And to, to ensure that this will be autoplayed, just as in the, the animation player, as you can see, this is an autoplay animation here. We can use the, we can toggle this option, toggle autoplay this animation on start. So this is the first thing that will be played when this animation tree starts to, to play. Then I wanted to play the arrival animation. And here comes the, the interesting part. We have two states right now, so we need to transition to transit to the next one. How do we do that? By holding shift and dragging from one state or from one animation to another, we create an, a transition. And if you click on the transition, you can see in the inspector that we have some properties. And the way you can transit uh, automatically to the next animation is by uh, toggling the, the auto advance property. 
this will make sure that it will transit to the to the next animation uh, automatically but uh, we can set up the switch mode as well in my case for my boss i just use the at end switch mode this will make so that when this animation finish it will automatically transit to the next one in this case the arrival the arrive uh, then in my case after the, the the boss arrives which is this animation where the boss grabs the screen and comes from the from deep uh, from the deep space all the way to to the screen uh, after that I want the boss to center the position on the screen so move to center same thing when this finishes it will automatically transit to the move to center so I'll set this at the end auto advance and after this uh, after the character after the boss moves to, to the center of the screen I want it to start the idle animation and same thing I will transit from the move to center to the idle uh, automatically at the end uh, now after some attacks I want the after some idling after some time idling I want the boss to start attacking but here comes the, the interesting part uh, since we have the left hand attack and the right hand attack which one should the, the boss do which one should the boss perform after it uh, it triggers the, the idol now we have to make some logic we have to add some logic layer on top of this of this state machine right uh, so before we actually dive into the the logic the scripting part uh, let me explain something to you uh, we'll start by just transiting transiting to the left hand attack which is this left slap so I will add a new transition here shift and drag it to the left hand attack and you can see that we have this advanced condition the advanced condition is a string that you can set up and once you set this condition to true it will automatically uh, it will basically trick uh, trick this auto advance to be on this is exactly how they explain this turn on auto advance when this when this condition is set so uh, what we are going to do is to give it a name so let's say left slap and i will do the same thing for the the right hand attack the advanced condition will be uh, right slap and uh, well, after the character finished the, the left hand attack, it will automatically transition back to the idle. So immediate, we will set this to at end, auto advance. And here, I also want this to happen on uh, at end. But here is when the, the immediate can be uh, useful. So let's say your character may uh, perform the, the idle animation three times and you want it to immediate trigger an attack. Uh, this is not my case but you can leave the switch mode at immediate uh, but i will switch it to at end uh, then at, at the end when the left slap is true it will perform the left hand attack so uh, let's start by um, this is something that i think that i will make a contribution to the good repository because uh, i think that this is something that is missing in the animation tree I will start by adding a script to it. It can be a building script. And basically the only thing that this will do is to give a better interface to other, uh, other classes to interact with the animation tree. Because what happens is that condition, we don't have an easy, an easy way to set the value of uh, a condition. So the, the way that we are going to do is the following. We will get a transition, uh, we'll get the, the condition name, which should be a string, and the value. So, this is the complex part, because in order to set the, the value of this condition, if we go to the animation tree and we go to parameters, conditions, we have the left slap here, available to set on and off, the right slap as well. But in order to access these conditions, we had to go through this path, this node path. So parameters slash conditions slash left slab. So to prevent other classes to knowing all this path, we are just going to encapsulate the, the access to these conditions through this method. So we are going to just call this set 
and copy this parameters parameters slash conditions condition conditions slash slash uh, and then we are going to add the condition name condition name and pass the value so let me just verify if this is correct parameters conditions oh, oh, I missed a n here conditions and the condition name so this is the interface that we are going to use to set the, the conditions right now we can actually give the, the logic so for the logic I am going to attach a script to the boss and it won't be a building script uh, something that we are going to, to set up here is what will trigger the, the left slap, for instance. What will trigger the, the attack of the, uh, the boss. For my boss, I use something that I call two shots. So, for instance, I have an attack two shots. So, now let's, go, let's design the, the actual boss behavior, right? So, I think that I will add some comments here. Okay, so for the design of this boss, I want this behavior here. Uh, every two idle animations the boss will attack. Uh, it will perform a slap by default. Uh, it will perform the laser animations every seven damage taken. And a special attack, a special attack every seven damage taken and the health is below 30%. It will die if the, the health depletes, right? So let's start by setting up the threshold for the idle, for the attack, right? So we'll have an attack threshold, which by default will be one, right? So after one animation, it will perform the second one, and then it will slap uh, or attack. And we'll also need a variable to store, which is the current value, how many idle animations the character already performed so var uh, idle count which by default is zero we need something to to iterate on this idle count so let's create a method to increase idle count which will basically just increase this idle count idle count plus one or idle right plus one and it will verify if the idle count is greater than the threshold so attack threshold if so it will reset the idle to zero and I will leave this commented but it will call the animate the attack method so we might already have this right so let me create the, the attack method and we are just going to pass right now but just so we have a breakpoint here statement so I forgot the if statement and this so how will we how will we increase this how will we call this method here so we can um, increase the the counting of the idle uh, in the idle animation, at the end, I will take rid of that. At the end, I will tell it to call a method on the boss that is called uh, increase idle count. So every time the idle finishes, we will have the idle count increase it, right? Yeah. Uh, you may ask yourself why we are not using the um, animation finished and checking if the if the animation that just finished is the idle uh, is because since the idle is a loop animation the animation finish um, signal is not called this is I think that this is a bug but some people say it's an expected behavior so the, the best way is to just add this at the end to add a, a method call at the end so if we test this let's see uh, oh, something that you must activate is set the, the animation tree active, right? So let's do that and test this. Okay, idle. One, two. In, yeah, we are calling the, the attack method, so uh, this is already working, right? 
so this is already working uh, it's left by default so uh, the next thing that we are going to do is to create an array with two uh, with two values which is the the left the left slab and the right slab so we can randomize which one we are going to use for the the boss attack set which i will also create a variable for that so a constant um slap slaps yes no. uh left slap and right slap right slap and we are going to have a attack set a variable that's called attack set this is which attack the, the character will use because at the end of the attack method we are going to use that to call to set the, the condition on the animation tree so attack set by default I think that I will set this to be this lapse by default so by default it will use this uh, this attack set uh, now what you are going to do here I need a reference to the animation tree ready for animation tree and um, oh yeah we are going to on the ready function we need to call the randomized method just so we can sort out the the random factors so we don't always have a random palette a random pattern so by calling the randomized pattern the randomized method we prevent that from happening and right here what we are going to do is to have a attack where variable attack which by default is new and what we are going to do is to go to the attack set the I think that we can call this in online, right? So we are going to get the attack set, a random integer that will be um, a random value going to the the size of this attack set or this array attack set that size. So this is basically randomizing a value and modulating it by the random uh, by the the size of this array. And this is how we can uh, get integer, uh, in random integer values. So next, what we need to do is to actually call the to actually set the the condition on the animation tree. So animation tree that set condition attack true. This is basically what we 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 need. For, for this to 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 make what we we want, uh, but there is one thing that we need to to do because if this is uh, set true and we don't make it go back to false, uh, the character will keep slapping all the time. Um, let's uh, let me show you what what I'm, I want to say by that. So one, two, slap. And it went, it slap again, and slap again. So, uh, oh, it, it, it is not calling the, the right, the right slap. But we, we want this to, to be done only when the, the idle count is greater than, than the attack threshold, right? So we want this to, to be back to, um, to false. And this can be done in the animation itself. So left hand attack. At the end of this animation, I will add a property track on the animation tree and on the left slab. So it will set this to false. So it, it won't go back um, indefinitely. And we are going to do the same for the right hand attack. Add a track, property track, animation tree, uh, right slab, and insert key.
I think that for the for the setup transition here, we can set it immediate because we don't need it to to go all the way uh, to the end to to play the arrive animation. Yeah, like this. One, two, slap, and it's not coming back probably because we don't. We, yeah, we didn't set the the transition here. And auto advance. So let's see. One, two, slap. One, two, slap. Yeah. So let me just see if the left one is also working. <laughs> it seems like the only the the right one is being played. Um. Uh, so I think that uh, something that you can use to, to debug this is to always uh, make this window always on top and pause the, the game, go into the remote scene and see if these, no, both of them are false. So it's basically just, yeah, the left one just played. So it's just a, a bad design, <laughs> a bad um, random random factor. Now, with that, we have everything we need to set up the, the boss pattern. So uh, from now on, I will just basically finish all of these um, all of these conditions here, and I will be right back with everything set so you can see the, the whole script. Something interesting that I want to show you is, as you can see, uh, the way that it will trigger the laser attacks is if the hurt count is greater than the laser's to show. And the hurt count increases when the character takes damage, right? So when the health changes. So how will we, how will we test this if we don't have a player hurting the, the enemy? Well, we can basically test the scene, make this, uh, this window always on top, and as I said, uh, we just have to go to the remote, to the boss health here, decrease it by a bit, just so we can see if the laser, yeah, so now we have the lasers working, and this is how you can debug this, this features, uh, this method, this technique, without actually having the, the player on board. So, seems like we finished all the conditions, so every two idle animations the boss will attack, this is what we have here, it will idle once, then twice, and then it will start the, the attacking, uh, it will slap by default, so the attack set is set to slap, uh, we have all the attack sets here, uh, the super true shield, which is a float, it is basically just a, a percentage of the maximum health, so it will first see if it can perform a laser true shot, which is meant to be after 9 damage taken. It increases the hurt count by 1, so this is what uh, tells if it should perform a laser attack or not. Every time the, the character got hurt, it will increase this. Actually, I think that this could be here, I don't know. Uh, if it can perform a laser attack and the, max, the, the current health is equal or below uh, or lower than the maximum health multiplied by the super threshold. This means uh, when the character got its health below 30%, it will start to use the super attack. And after that, we just set the attack to the current attack set and pick uh, randomly one of the, the attacks inside of this array, inside of this list. Uh, in the case of the supers, we just have the, the mount. And uh, lastly, if the health the depletes, which is when it reaches zero, it would tell the animation tree to trigger the, the death uh, transition, which, as you can see, essentially 
everything but the mouth attack, which I'm setting right now, uh, transits to the die to the die attack to the die uh, state, or the death state. So if we try to play this level three, hopefully this will work. So uh, firstly, I have to set this on the level three to play the boss. So we have the boss there. Okay, everything is working. Slap attack. Slap attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we have the <laughs> the laser now. Uh, we don't have the feedback of the damage, but uh, yeah, we have the the lasers. Let's manually decrease the the boss health with boss health. So I think that ten will be enough. And if I play this. Oops. One, two, yeah, mouth attack. Now let's kill this bastard. And the death animation. <laughs> so that's it. That's how you can set up a boss pattern or a boss behavior pattern using good, uh, using essentially animations. Uh, a little bit of code, just enough to to make the transitions to trigger the transitions, and of course the animation tree with the, the state machine, uh, with the state machine root node. So, uh, all of this is possible thanks to the patronage, firstly, and I will really, really appreciate if you guys could like support me on either Patreon or buy a crime the, the game on each. I'll put all the links in the description. This is what made all of this sustainable. This is what uh, allowed me to produce more of this content. So, if you like this content, support me <laughs> so that's it thank you so much for watching keep developing and until the next time